Well, hello, I am one student, Mr. Reeves with you today. Um, and I wanted to take some time to go through comparing the shapes of histograms to their corresponding box plots. So in the Desmos activity that I am asking you to do, uh, one of the parts you have to do is you have to compare histograms to box plots. And I wanted to help you out. Uh, I did post some videos that I was hoping would help you, but I've had some people ask for some more clarification. All right, so um, in the videos that hopefully you watched, it talked about three types of distributions of data. Uh, in the middle, appropriately, we have this one that is symmetric. All right, and then on the left, we have one that is skewed right. And on the right, we have one that is skewed left and i know this can be confusing uh, i know for years it confused me because i always thought this should be called skewed right and this should be called skewed left but nobody asked me my opinion so we're going to go with what uh, they decided long before we were ever around but let's talk about symmetric because symmetric totally makes sense all right so why is it called symmetric all right so hopefully you're familiar with the line of symmetry when you have a line of symmetry, you divide something into two congruent parts. So right here, if you take a look at this graph, I could put a line right down the middle and I could divide this symmetrically. This part on the right and this part on the left would be exactly the same. And if you compare that to the box plot below it, it's symmetric as well. Here's our median, right? the right half and the left half of this box plot are exactly the same, right? Here's our median, right at 50, our mean and our median. All right, actually it's, yeah, it's gonna be right about there. And in a symmetric distribution, the mean and the median are the same. All right, so that's one thing to look at. Look at the shape and you should be able to see a corresponding shape between the histogram and the box plot. So what else should we look at? We should look at the minimum values and the maximum values. So right here, you could see the maximum is over here at 80, right? Or close to 80, because this is a histogram right here. And the minimum right here at about 25. So I can match these up by looking at the end of this whisker and my last, my last bar on the histogram, and the end of this whisker and my last box on this histogram. So this is what a symmetric distribution should look like. So you're not going to run across ones that are perfect like this very often, but you're going to come across ones that are close to that. All right, so let's go to the left to see one that is skewed right. So I hope you got a chance to watch that video of uh, when they had the picture of the rat with the tail. Do you remember that one? And it, it showed how the tail went this direction. All right, so when we are skewed to the right, just think of that tail. The direction that the tail goes is the direction you are scaled. On a, on a box plot, we call this the whisker, right? So the whisker is like the tail over here. All right, so you see how this comes down? And there it is. So when you're looking at skewed to the right, it doesn't mean more data is to the right. It actually means it trails off to the right. You have that tail or that whisker to the right. Actually, we have more data packed in here, right? We've got, uh, what, between 20 and 25 people right here and that, so we have a lot more data here. So when you look here on the box plot, you'll see how this part of the box plot, remember each section represents 25%, right? Do you see how this 25% is a lot more spread out? This 25% and is a lot more compact. There's a lot more data in here. So those box, when it's more narrow, that's when you're seeing something like this, right? Okay, so again, look at the minimum, look at the maximum, look at the median, right there, there's our median. When you're on a histogram, if you can divide the numbers in half, not the number of bars, right? Because we have a lot more people here, but if you were to take the number of each of them, and I also put a video that shows how you can pretty much get the median, estimate the median from a histogram, right? It's not gonna be exactly in the middle because there's a lot more people here. So the median's gonna be over here. In fact, they marked off the median for us. All right, so this one right here is skewed to the right. Okay, so let's go over here and look at skewed to the left. You see this whisker clearly from the box plot. You can see this is skewed to the left. You can see this here, right? All this 
that tail again picture that rat tail is going this way it's skewed to the left and again we have a lot more cramped in this little space right you see how high these bars are when the bars are higher then those boxes are going to be smaller they're more narrow right and then this is getting more and more spread out so this box is wider the wider the box on a on a box plot the more spread out the data is and look at this whisker it goes all the way from the minimum all the way over here what to past 11 right that's a big area on the graph but there's not much data in there right so that's why it looks like this so again look at the median look where the median is okay the median right here is what between now what around 13 or so all right there it is 13 right there do you see how that matches up look at the maximum look at the minimum all right so when you are asked to compare histograms to box plots those are the things to look at we didn't talk about standard deviation that's not part of this video but just a reminder that standard deviation is a measure of spread the more spread out the data is the more it is further away from the mean the higher the standard deviation is so when things are super compact when you have a box plot when things are super compact a super small box plot is going to have a low standard deviation when it is spread out a lot you're going to have a higher standard deviation all right so in the next video i'm actually going to go ahead and take a look at that desmos activity to help you out but maybe after watching this this could help you at least get started and work through the first two parts matching up the histograms to the box plots thanks for watching everybody